Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to our Nuggets at Noon. Today, I'm privileged to have with me uh, Pastor Steve Smith from here, Manio First Assembly of God. And uh, Steve has um, got some incredible testimonies of how God has brought him uh, to where he is today. And so I thought that it would be awesome for him to share a few things with us. And so today I've asked him to share about his background, where he came from, and because uh, he wasn't raised in a Pentecostal church like many of you that perhaps have been listening to us each day. And and he doesn't have the spiritual background, I guess you could say. But Steve, I just want you to kind of start uh, back when you told me that your father was in the Air Force and that you, uh, you know, uh, were, lived in several countries and whatever. But one thing that you had told me, you came from the Presbyterian Church and you were like an altar boy or whatever. Kind of start from there and kind of give us a little bit uh, of your history. Okay. Uh, Pastor Buddy, thank you for letting me be a part of your ministry. Yes, my background is Presbyterian on both sides of my family. And then growing up in a military family, the uh, base chapel was used for Jewish services, Catholic services, and Protestant services. And I was an altar boy, sang in the choir, would help light the candles uh, before the service and put them out at the end. It was all very regimented. The services were exactly one hour. <laughs> exactly one hour. I experienced God one time, though, in a chapel service. Uh, I, I wouldn't have put that name on it, but I experienced the presence of God at a candlelight Christmas service. We were singing part of the Hallelujah Chorus with the children's choir and the adult choir. We were a very good choir. And uh, during that moment when we're singing the Hallelujah Chorus, there was the goosebumps and this sense of being lifted almost. Uh, in God's presence. I didn't recognize it then. I do now. So that was the first time you actually felt the presence of God. Yes. I mm -hmm. would have been in fifth or sixth grade. Okay. Okay. Another encounter I had with God was very different. All right. This is when dad was in Vietnam flying fighter bombers. And uh, we were attending my, fa my mother's family church. And I was in Sunday school. And it was Palm Sunday morning. And I'm dressed up in my little navy blazer, white shirt, clip-on red bow tie, Buster Brown shoes. I don't know if Pentecostals wore those or not, but <laughs> Presbyterians <laughs> did. <laughs> and so I'm in Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. And Miss Margaret Patterson, who had been teaching uh, kids Sunday school since the days of Noah, <laughs> was teaching us about Passion Week, about... Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, and then coming into Jerusalem, and then the crucifixion. How old were you at this point? I would have been in the fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay. And she, she was describing in pretty graphic detail about the crucifixion that was coming up. We would celebrate it as Good Friday. And she talked about how people plucked out Jesus' beard and spat on him and whipped him and abused him horribly before he was crucified. And when she said they spat on him, I started to giggle, Pastor. I mean, I'm 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, right. Okay, I can't relate. I could picture saliva and mucus running down and dripping off his face. Mm. And I giggled. I, I had no way of relating to it. I thought it was funny. She called me out uh, in the Sunday school class rather firmly and told my mom after church. Uh oh <laughs> It wasn't good, was it? <laughs> Fast forward now to to when I was in the sixth grade, around the time I experienced God in the choir, and lived in Hawaii. It was a time of racial tension in Hawaii in the late 60s. Uh, Caucasian folks are 15% are, uh, of the population in Hawaii. So it was a good experience to shift mm -hmm. for me culturally. One day I was in school, was going to try uh, in the sixth grade to invite, or seventh grade, whatever it was, to invite a girl to the school dance. So I really dressed up. I had purple bell bottoms, <laughs> big old wide tie, and a white style, belt. Really. It was a style, yeah. you know, platform shoes, the whole deal. And I was going to talk to this girl and invite her to the middle school dance. 
And uh, so I saw her at uh, lunch break, and we were standing below a balcony. And uh, a neighborhood bully, uh, who happened to be Filipino and liked to pick on people, particularly skinny Caucasian people, leaned over the balcony, okay, right right above where I was talking to this young lady I'm trying to invite to a middle school dance. And I'd spent half the morning on my hair. I got into mom's dippity do and hairspray and I was, I was styling, you know. And he spat on me. I mean, a mouthful. And it ran off the end of my face. Mm -hmm. And the girl and everybody around me started mocking me. And I had a sense of, we reap what we sow. There was a sense of remembering the fourth grade Sunday school class mm -hmm. with Miss Margaret Patterson. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, the next time I remember experiencing God, and that, that was a different experience of God. It was a, a right, humiliation. But, right, but it, it reminded you. Oh, that's yeah, it did. Yeah. That's not funny at all. Mm, yeah. but it, saliva and mucus dripping off your face and mm. getting mocked because all the kids around laughed. Right. Well, now you, you, um, my understanding is that when you got a little older, you went into the hippie culture. Yes. <laughs> okay. Tell me a little bit about that. And... <laughs> Peace. <man. laughs> so, uh, started playing music in clubs and bars in high school. So I would have played in dance bands and in the bars at probably 15 to 16, uh, the bands would sneak me in the back door of the club or the bar because I was underage, obviously. Uh, but during that time, a contemporary Christian band came through Clovis, New Mexico. Dad was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base. There was a Baptist church, a fired up Bible preaching Baptist church downtown. They had this contemporary Christian band, I'd never heard of such a thing, called Truth. Mm -hmm. You may have heard yeah, of I've that, heard okay, them. we're the same age, yeah. about a week apart. Truth came through, and they did a concert, and they did testimony. Somebody invites me to the Baptist church, and I'm seeing long-haired, this long-haired guy was laying it down on the drums, and they had horns and guitars, and they had a good sound, they really did. And then they gave these testimonies, I had never heard anybody speak of experiencing God. Mm. It, it was foreign to my understanding, Pastor, of I can encounter God. Mm. I, I can experience the love of Jesus. Now, were you still connected with the uh, with the church? Yes, as as yeah, the... We'd, I'd be attending the base chapel. Uh -huh. By that time, we might have attended a church off base. Mm -hmm. My parents owned their own home. We didn't live on the base by that time. But it would have been a mainline church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, uh, I am grateful for that. Uh, my upbringing in the Presbyterian Church, the, the deep sense of reverence for the sovereignty of God, mm. the majesty of God, uh, I deeply appreciate. So in this concert, it, the Truth concert, okay, they're playing all this great music, and it doesn't sound like, most Sunday morning church music. It sounded like the stuff on the radio, mm -hmm. except it had Christ honoring words. So I enjoyed it. Bought an album, I think. Uh, long play album. At the end of it then, the pastor, dressed in a suit, because I guess we pastors always wear suits, don't we? <laughs> uh, came up and, and did something I'd never seen. And that was to invite people to the front of the building, you know, where the flowers are, the candles. We and, call that an altar call today. Right. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. Okay. That was foreign to me. Mm -hmm. I, the only time I'd ever seen anybody but the preacher at the altar was one time in a base chapel. A woman came up and knelt in, at the front steps, kind of below the choir loft. Mm -hmm. And I was in the kids' choir, and I looked down at her thinking, well, what is she doing? That's not in the bulletin. Yeah. And so I asked my mother after church, what, why was that lady kneeling at the front? And she might have been crying. Mom said, uh, my mother was saved in Billy Graham crusade, so she understood the coming forward idea. Mm -hmm. She said the woman was praying, and maybe she was giving a heart to Jesus. I still didn't quite understand that. 
So back in the truth concert, the, the pastor is inviting people forward to give their lives to Christ, to surrender to his lordship, to repent. And I was under conviction that night. Uh, I couldn't have put that name on it, Pastor, because I didn't have the language right. to say, oh, I was convicted of right. sin. I was just, there was this something. And how old are you at this point? I'm 15, 15 16, okay. 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm gripping the back of the pew in front of me. It was an internal thing right. going on. And I saw football players going down, the cool people, the beautiful people. The not so beautiful, the not so cool, the geeks, everybody were a lot of my high school friends and people I didn't know as well were going to the front to transact something. <laughs> you knew nothing. Give your heart to Jesus. Right. I, that, I didn't really right. understand that. All I knew is there was this something that was wrestling with me and it really was almost an arm wrestling pastor so you responded to that call no you? sir well, you did not no okay. sir <laughs> there was this there was this it was an ownership situation it huh. was a this is my life no it, it was this it was all right so how much longer after that and when did the when did you actually uh submit and respond <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, in great brokenness, probably six years later. Uh -huh. You're still playing in the bars. I paid my way through college doing that. Okay. I played in dance bands. You know, we did one show band where we did a 50s act. Uh -huh. uh, did 50s stuff and jig around. Uh, so I paid my way through college playing uh, on the weekends in the bars and got into the drugs and the, the music scene that I will not glorify. Um, the immorality, that is. And uh, about six months after college, I had gone full-time in the club scene, lounge lizard, whatever you want to call it. So seven, six, seven nights a week in the clubs and had a complete nervous breakdown. Uh, buddy, I had lost, pastor buddy, pardon me, I had lost track of reality. I really think it was a combination of, of demonic activity and mental illness and I would hear voices and respond to them. Mm -hmm. So at the time, at the age of 23, you know, pothead, drinking a lot, immoral life, I wore a beard as much as I could grow at 22. And the voices told me, cut half of it off. Oh, my. So I shaved half of my beard. So from here to here would have been a clean shave. And from here to here was hair. You were pretty, looked pretty awkward, I'm sure. I was very strange. I was bizarre. I would hear voices. I'm thinking, I'm hearing the divine. I'm experiencing the divine. Man, the devil will make an absolute fool of us. Mm. He will deceive. He will lie. He'll come as an angel of light. There were times I predicted little things in the future that I had these mystical understandings of, and mm. it was nothing but evil supernatural things pastor we're way over the time oh go ahead <laughs> keep going go ahead we're I'm, going ahead i've been called worse <laughs> okay <laughs> fast forward all right the the voices in my head the torment if you will uh increased and uh, i eventually came completely unglued during that season though uh it's strange how the holy spirit works I have a sense of the calling of God to preach. Okay, now understand, I'm living an immoral life. Okay, mm -hmm. this is coloring outside the lines here a little bit of the way we expect God to work. I had lunch with my mom in Charlotte one day, and she loves the Lord, loves the Lord. And the band's in town, so I met mom for lunch. I'm hungover from the night before. Mm. And we're at Wendy's. Wendy's had just gotten started in the 80s. It was a big deal. Let's eat at Wendy's. We're sitting there eating at Wendy's. And I looked at mom as seriously as I could. And I said, mom, someday I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> wow. The Lord was already. Now figure that out. Okay. I'm a pothead. I'm drinking liquor. I'm selling drugs to my, my brothers who are in middle school. I'm an immoral person. I'm a sinner. You know. And yet God was 
tapping on my shoulder in this very unorthodox way, calling me to preach when I'm... <laughs> mm. All right. So eventually the mental illness and the, the demonic uh, activity in my life just wrecked me. I had a complete nervous collapse. And the night I came apart, we were playing in the Adams Mark Hotel in downtown Charlotte. Uh, at the time, it was uh, the nicest hotel in Charlotte. Fancy bar, you know. And they, we paid, they paid us pretty good money. I was, be, I was behaving very strangely. The, the voices told me that night to play songs in the wrong key. Mm. So if you can imagine now, we're, we're in a, a nice bar. And the band is grooving in G and I'm playing in G sharp. Imagine, you're a musician, Pastor. You can... And the band is looking at me like, what on earth are you doing? And I am wrecking these songs, playing bass a half tone off, uh, because the voices were telling me to. Mm. All right, so very strange behavior. Had a complete nervous breakdown. But building up to that point, my, my mother's pastor would come visit me. And he had a good bit of education. He could talk philosophy. He could talk uh, different religions and that. And so we would sit and chat about different religions and different New Age things that were popular at the time. And he would, he was courteous. He didn't get all, uh, he didn't preach at me. But each time we would talk about these different things that I was exploring, different religions, he would bring me back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That who you really need, Steve, is Jesus. But it wasn't this kind of stuff very kind and gentle. very kind and gentle and he brought me back to the love of jesus christ mm. it says steve who you really are looking for you is is the jesus in the bible wow so the night it all came apart and i just completely blew up uh mentally and emotionally i thought i was going to be shot in this bar the guitar player in the band was an angry violent man Carried a gun, wore black leather. Okay, he was just who he was. So I thought I defended him. I hadn't. It was all here. And so I left the club late at night. Uh, and uh, drove through several, uh, drove probably about 10 miles in the wrong lanes of traffic with the lights out. Oh, my. Mm. And at 2 o'clock in the morning uh, in downtown Charlotte. And I'm certain that is the case. Uh, uh, anyway, made it to my parents' house about eight miles with the lights out. I thought he was chasing me, that we had some mystical link. Went to the pastor's house. We never know when we sow seeds, all right, how long or how God's going to bring the harvest because mm -hmm. his word will not return void. Wow. I thought, I've got to get to Jesus. I, I think he's with the preacher. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, that's, I think that's, the preacher's got him. That's right. He's at the front and <laughs> with the preacher. So I rang the doorbell forever, it seemed, and he never woke up. And so I prayed my first prayer. God, I, I thought the guitar player was chasing me and was going to shoot me. Uh -huh. I prayed, uh, God, I'm going to die in a minute. And I'm not ready to meet you. That's all I knew to pray. Mm. I knew there was a judgment. I knew there was a judge. I knew who he was. But that's all I knew to pray. Mm. So that was my altar call. Would, I, so you would say that was your salvation moment? Uh, getting close. <laughs> okay. Sometime later, I, I my parents got me to mental health. The mental health... Uh, department in Charlotte. They didn't know about Teen Challenge. Mm -hmm. If they had known, they would have sent me. All right, but we didn't know about it. And that's a whole other kettle of fish. Okay. <laughs> we'll get that one another day. Long story short, I made my own altar call. I went to church with well, my folks uh -huh. at the Presbyterian Church. And at the close, the pastor was finished his sermon, the one who had been visiting me, uh -huh. telling me about the Lord Jesus. And you just... I just walked up there because I remembered the Baptist church. Well, God's at the front. And if you want to 
Get well, God, go to the front. <laughs> Went to the front. And he knew what to do. He put his arm around me and he said, you know, he, he dismissed the people. And he said, Steve, I want you to meet me in my office in five minutes. Wow. Wow. He led me to Christ. That is Sinner's amazing. prayer right. led me to Billy Graham. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And this was in the Presbyterian. That was in the Presbyterian church. You know, and it, it, what is so cool? Yesterday we talked about um, Jonah and how there was no escape from the love of God. None. And God's love and his mercy reached you. Actually, it started when you were even a youngster. Yes. And his love just continued to... Yes. To, 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 to reach out to you and even at your worst moments when yes. you shaved half your beard. Half my beard. <laughs> he was still reaching out. If we make our bed in Hades, he's still there. He's if still we there. ascend to the heavens, he's still there. I, and and that, that's such an incredible testimony. And I want to thank you for sharing that because there may be some people that are been watching uh, us that, you know, they, they may feel like that they themselves or maybe their their family member is just totally lost that there's no help for and no hope for them but i just want to encourage you by this testimony we know that god's love reaches reaches far Amen. his mercy endures forever Amen. i thank you for being with us thank you pastor steve yes, sir. and by the way tomorrow pastor steve's going to be back and is going to share a miracle that took place in his family, but uh, later on, this is later on in life, but also something uh, that he had to go through with, that he went through with, that probably many of you, and I know I have, have gone through with in a different different way, different perspective. But be back with us tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.